Susan, there are so many beautiful silks and silk-like fabrics on the market, but I think a lot of us shy away from them because, one, we may not know how to sew with them, but two, they seem like they might be a lot of trouble to take care of. Is that true? Oh, absolutely not, Cheryl, and I'll Good. be showing you how to take care of your silks in just a minute, but I brought a sample of some of the different varieties of silks that are available. We see so many silk-like polyesters in the stores today, but real silk is really getting a strong comeback. Much more common is a silk crepe de chine. This is what mm, you'd make a blouse beautiful. or a dress out of. And then a silk jaguard, very beautiful woven in design. But this is the kind of thing that's being copied in polyester as well. This is an elegant sheer with a woven in glitter stripe, a gold stripe for a beautiful evening blouse. These are all and silks. These so are far. all 100% mm -hmm. silks, yes. But we also have silk suitings. This one, for mm -hmm. example, would make a lovely pant or a skirt or a jacket. And other suiting weight silks down here. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this is a silk knit. I and imagine how comfortable that would be in a little top, very stretchy and comfortable to wear. But I also brought some examples of polyesters that are really quite lovely. I'm wearing a polyester blouse today and it's polyester Georgette. I throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer, it's just great. But it looks just and like the silk you showed us. Oh, it sure does. And this is crepe crepe de chine mm. drapes beautifully can you see how soft that mm. is feels it just elegant. feels wonderful these are extremely practical because you do just throw them in the washer throw them in the dryer but i wanted to show you some other silks that i've washed i brought some silk clothing with me today this has been washed i would say 10 times and i wear it a lot it's a real favorite dress a blouse fairly new it's only been washed two or three times now this is a silk suit cheryl i have a matching skirt and a jacket and this is a silk linen, but I would not wash this one. This is a little too heavy. Actually, it would be harder to iron it when it was Probably dry. Probably so. Or when I uh, had to take care of it. But the dress underneath is also a silk crepe de chine, and it's been washed and, and hand washed, actually, many, many times. It still has a very nice drape to it. One of the things I really like about washing my silks, like this blouse, is that when I wash a blouse, they always feel so much fresher when I wear them. And we don't and have that dry, clean smell about oh, them either. Because silk is expensive to buy in the first place, and so when I can limit my dry cleaning costs, of course, I'm going to spend so much less over the mm -hmm. lifetime of that garment. But I mentioned washing silk, and I want to share with you and with your viewers some of the secrets that we've used in washing silk. I'm going to give you that okay. to get rid of for a second. We've brought just a couple bowls here with us today, and naturally at home you would be using something slightly larger than a bowl to wash your silk. In fact, I usually wash it in the bathtub because then I have lots of space and I have lots of water to deal with with that fabric. But, you know, another thing that we want to do with that silk fabric is to wash it first before we cut it out. And that pre-shrinks the fabric and it really does a great job. We're not job. going to be disappointed then after we've gone to all the trouble to make something, then wash it and find lots of problems in shrinkage. No, not at all. bleeding of, of colors. Right. I brought a little scrap of silk to show you how I would wash a piece of silk. And I'm just going to dump it into my water. Now, I've used lukewarm water. Actually, lukewarm to cool is really best because oh that seems to affect the dye in silk the least. If you use really warm water, you're going to run into some problems. Now, we're going to just put the silk into the water and we're going to swish it a few times, no more than for about a minute. Because if you let the silk soak in the water, then the dye again has a little more chance to run. And I would take care of prints this way or anything else. Now, when I rinse this fabric, I may find that my water has a lot of color in it. Our color was kind of light blue to begin with, so mm -hmm. we won't experience we much it. dye loss. But in my dark colored dresses that I show you, I still get some color loss in those fabrics. But we're not to worry but, about it. No, what it really is, is just kind of an overrun of dye that shouldn't have been there in the first place. I'm going to quickly move this into my rinse water. If you scrub, you abrade the fabric. It's not very strong when it's wet. I'm just gently squeezing my soapy water out of this. And I say soap, but actually what I've used here are, um, oh, I might have used liquid dishwashing detergent mm -hmm. like ivory or joy Something or whatever gentle. you use. Mm -hmm. But there are also some commercial products that are really quite nice. Easy Wash and Wool Tone. Um, Woolite's another one that works very well. Both Easy Wash and Wool Tone are very nice on silk because they don't, they're not too harsh for the fibers. Um, actually, when I'm traveling, sometimes I just use shampoo because mm -hmm. it's what I it's happen handy. to have handy. <laughs> but now I'm going to rinse this several times, maybe even two or three times, just to make sure that I get all the moisture, or rather all the soap out of that water and again the larger the quantity of fabric you have the bigger mm -hmm. the container you want to use the bathtub is good 
Now again, I'm not rubbing and I'm not wringing this out. I'm just gonna gently squeeze some of the water out of here. And I'm gonna put it in a towel and roll it in a towel. By rolling this in the towel, I get it almost dry. Let's see, I need to do a little shifting here. I'm gonna roll this in the towel and just kind of gently press all the moisture out of this fabric. Now we would never and want to hang our fabric to let it drip dry without no, not being advisable. No, because there's too much weight in the water. Water is very heavy. So after I've rolled it in the towel and I've gotten rid of some of that moisture, it's still real mm -hmm. wet. Now I'm going to press it until it's dry. While it's this damp. Yes, while it's this damp. So I'll let you take my towel away. And I have a little pressing pad here that I'm going to use. Oh, this is just the color of my pressing pad. It matches exactly. <laughs> <laughs> be harder to see. <laughs> Didn't think about that. There. It's really quite wet, Cheryl, and I think you can agree from touching it. There's a lot of moisture still in this. I've turned my steam iron on, and I can either use steam or a dry iron. It actually doesn't, doesn't make any difference. But I'm going to use a cooler temperature. I'm not up at the very top. If your iron says silk, that's fine. Or a wool setting, a low wool setting is good. I'm going to keep my iron in constant motion on my fabric. Can you see a color change mm -hmm. here as it's drying out? And do you usually find people panic when they see this happening? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and they hold the iron in one spot, and then one spot gets too dry, and the rest of it really doesn't. Now, I'm pressing this just with a constant gliding motion so that it dries and gets an even texture all over. After we have pre-washed our material before we make our garment, Susan, then we don't have to expect any surprises after we've made it and no, washed it after No, you really that. won't at all. Now, I think that looks really nice, mm -hmm. don't you? This was a very lightweight silk, very soft, and it's pressed out with absolutely no wrinkles. It's really important to press it while it's wet. Otherwise, all of these wrinkles that came into my silk fabric here really will not go away. They'll dry in there and be quite permanent. But I think you can see that it really turns out very nicely. Now, there are some things that happen to silk when you wash them. Um, they change a little bit in texture. And so what I always do is after after I've washed my silk, I look at it, and I also measure it to see if it shrunk very much. Patty Palmer made a blouse, and we just had to laugh. She didn't have enough fabric left for the long she sleeve. She had much. to make a short sleeve. Because there can be a texture change, and there can be some shrinkage, because the manufacturer didn't really intend for you to wash this. Oh. But if I don't like the texture, when I do a little test sample, I usually take just about a 4 by 4 square and scrap and just test it and see what I think about it. If I wash it and I don't like the way it looks, then I go right ahead and I dry clean it. I don't okay. want to have a washed garment that I don't love when I'm done. Sure. Especially if we've gone to a lot of work to make something very detailed. That's right. Now interfacings are, I think, something else that people perhaps don't very understand important. about silks. Very what about important. selecting proper ones? Well, what most people have always used, and I'm going to move my water bowl back over to this side again. Um, what most people have usually used, Cheryl, are stitch-in interfacings. And if we're working with an extremely sheer fabric, we might use a silk organza like this one. Very, very sheer and lightweight. Mm -hmm. Or people have often used our lightweight blouse weight interfacings. Let's see if I can These are sew-ins. These that. are sew-ins. Mm -hmm. And yet the fusibles today, there are a couple of brand new ones that I'm going to show you that are fantastic. So I can either use a stitch-in or I can use one of the new fusibles. And I always make a test sample with a fusible. That's and a I idea. fuse it onto a scrap of my fabric. I feel to see which one feels mm -hmm. the best. These and are then three I, different types there are of three of different types, right. And and then I look at them from the right side to see which one looks the best because mm -hmm. all of those are extremely important. And then that helps me to decide which one I'm going to use. Now I'm going to show you three brands that I just love with silk and silk-like polyesters. This by the way is a silky polyester. This one, can you see how sheer this one is? It's called mm -hmm. Sheer Fuse. And this one, maybe you can see a little better this with is, my nail polish a, contrasting. Mm -hmm. This is a fusible. This one is called Sheer Blenders. Now, would you only use this, though, with blues, or does it Well, this one would blend in with a blue background print. They both come in colors, and they oh. mix and match. You can buy it in red or in charcoal gray or right? tan or the typical beige and white. And this was called, what, what was the name this of this? This is sheer, uh, sheer Fuse, and this one is called Sheer Blenders. Now, okay. these are both brand new. Your fabric stores may not have them yet, 
but they we can will look for soon. Them. Absolutely. And now, one that's been them. available for a longer period of time. This one's fun. It's a nylon trico like a slip, mm. and it stretches. This is easy knit. That stretchability really just provides softness when we use it as an interfacing. I interface three collars here, and I want you to look at them, Cheryl, because let's see if I can kind of hang them over the edge. Mm -hmm. They really look great. And you know, a lot Very of people soft. would say with fusibles, oh, it never looks right mm -hmm. from the right side. Or and it's yet, bubbly. These mm -hmm. have not bubbled. And I've washed them five times and dried them in the dryer, so they've been really super. One last thing I want to show you about fusibles is that particularly with the non-woven fusibles that we see so much, both sheer fuse and sheer blenders are non-wovens. They're really nice if you're doing a lot of detail work like v-necklines for example because they stabilize the neckline and, and don't allow it to want. stretch mm -hmm. and some of the other real soft interfacings would not have that same effect um, i've used fusibles in all the clothes that i brought to show you today and i've just been very very pleased with i the think results. that's wonderful to know that we're having some new products on the market that are especially designed for these exciting fabrics and next week our viewers will learn more about seams and hems and a little bit more about making an actual beautiful silk or silk like garment that will be my pleasure. Thanks, really fun.